This is the Fox 25 News at 11. Good morning and thanks for joining us today for Fox 25 News at 11. I'm David Chazanoff. Obviously a very freezing night last night and this morning also pretty cold. So Elliot Wilson's going to join us now. Elliot, is it getting any warmer out there? Yeah, we're definitely going to see some improvements as we head into the afternoon. We got clear skies out there. We got winds coming in out of the south, so that'll help us warm up a decent amount. But keep in mind, we're still going to be below average as we head throughout the afternoon. But we did have a cold start this morning and seeing a lot of improvement. We had single digit wind chills this morning. Now our wind chills are getting into the 20s in quite a few spots. And of course, we'll see that go up even more as we head throughout the afternoon. So a little bit warmer today, but still below average. Much warmer highs are on the way. Not to mention we do have a couple of rain chances in our forecast as well. But as you go throughout the uh, next couple of hours, those temperatures will make it into the low 40s, I think for most of us by noon, and then we'll stay in the mid to upper 40s as we head further into the afternoon. Breaking news here at the live desk. At least 28 people confirmed killed in the blizzard that hit New York this week. Here is a live news briefing out of Erie County, New York, and uh, this is the area of Buffalo that's being hit the hardest. According to their deputy mayor, they said we had rescuers rescuing the rescuers. That's how difficult these conditions have been. Many people uh, really impacted by this storm and their mayor just tweeting a few minutes ago that a travel ban remains in effect in Buffalo and they're asking people to stay off of their roads and so their plows can remove abandoned vehicles. The videos and photos out of this area have been terrible and they say it is a historic blizzard. The last time that they saw conditions like this was back in 1977 where 23 people were killed. So it's already worse with over 50 inches of snow during these conditions. We'll keep you updated here at the live desk. Breaking news. Officers are asking for help to solve a murder that happened on Christmas Eve. O Oklahoma City police say a person was found dead in a drainage ditch near South Walker and Southwest 59th Street. If you have any information, call the homicide tip line at 405-297-1200. And looking at what's happening across Oklahoma, OSBI is investigating after a Stevens County inmate was found dead. Deputies found the inmate unresponsive Sunday morning. The inmate has not been identified, but officials say they were booked into the jail in August. The medical examiner is determining a cause of death. An escaped inmate out of Arkansas is now behind bars in Oklahoma. Jeremy Call was arrested in the Floor County. Off officials say he broke out of a facility near Fort Smith on November 30th. And the Kansas City Chiefs superfan is behind bars in Tulsa after Bixby police arrested him for allegedly robbing a bank. Xavier Babudar was arrested December 16th. He pled not guilty and is due in court January 20th. Elk City police need help finding this person accused of several business burglaries last week. The department hopes someone can identify the suspect based on their tattoo. Take a look right there. If you have any information, call the Elk City Police Department at the number on your screen. A suspect is now in custody after being accused of robbing a store, shooting at an officer and leading police on a chase. Officers were called to the robbery yesterday morning at the CVS near Northwest 24th and Classen. Police say the suspect hit an employee with his gun, then got into a fight with a retired officer who walked in during the robbery. The suspect took the, re took the retired officer's gun. He had two firearms on him that we know of at that time. When he was leaving the store, an officer was arriving on scene. That suspect fired shots at the officer. Uh, was able to get into a vehicle and drove off. They, they arrested the suspect after he crashed near Northwest 14th and Classen. The suspect and an employee were taken to the hospital, but they're expected to be okay. A Norman man says his car was broken into for a fourth time this year on Christmas Eve. Now he's looking to move. David Newland believes the thieves are using a coat hanger to break in since his windows haven't even been smashed. Newland says he's had hundreds of dollars worth of items stolen. I come outside 
and I noticed my door was open just a little bit and I looked in the car and my glove compartment was open, which is typical with the other times that it had happened. So I already knew what to look for and what was gone. Now, Norman police tell us they take these crimes seriously and serial numbers and any security camera footage are helpful. We've got your back this morning. More than 3,000 Southwest Airlines flights across the U.S. were delayed or canceled yesterday, and hundreds of travelers at Will Rogers World Airport are being impacted. At first, I was really sad to be able to miss Christmas with my family, but now it's kind of almost comical just how bad it's been, where I'm not getting my hopes up for anything anymore, just hopeful to get on a flight at one point. So. Flight Aware says Southwest has canceled more than 60% of their flights. At least I wasn't already on vacation. You know, we were trying to get out. So better on the front end, I guess, than in the middle. Southwest also says any traveler who booked a trip from Christmas through January 2nd can rebook at no charge. And these flight disruptions have been happening all across the country. The airport seeing the most impact, according to FlightAware, is Denver International. And as of last night, the site reported 242 incoming flights canceled, flights going to Vegas and to Dallas Love Field also seeing a lot of cancellations. Midway Airport in Chicago was also one of the hardest hit, at least 154 cancellations there, and BWI in Baltimore also seeing a lot of backups as well. At least 147 flights into BWI were canceled yesterday. So when all Southwest was easily the most impacted, FlightAware reports the airline canceled almost 2,900 flights yesterday. That's 70% of all its flights scheduled. The airline had another 673 delays, and the U.S. Department of Transportation tweeted that it will be investigating Southwest delays and cancellations. Oklahoma's annual student enrollment for public schools is up for the second year in a row. State Department of Education data shows more than 701,000 students enrolled this year. That's up from 698,000 last year. And Tulsa Public Schools remains the largest district with more than 33,000 students. Oklahoma City was second, followed by Epic Charter Schools. And Red Dirt Country Music will headline Governor Stitt's upcoming inaugural balls in January. The inaugural committee announced Corey Kent of Bixby will play at the Tulsa Ball on January 6th. The following night at the Enid Ball will feature Oklahoma State grad Josh Malloy. Stoney LaRue will play at the January 9th OKC Ball. <clears throat> Excuse me, Stitt won a second term as governor in November, defeating Democrat Joy Hoffmeister. And happening today, Oklahoma City municipal court cases are canceled. Defendants will be notified of a new court date by phone or through the mail. And if your contact information has been changed, call the municipal court at 405-297-3898. Oklahoma Blood Institute trying to get more folks to donate after the holiday lull. Now through January 3rd, donors will get a choice of a long sleeve t-shirt plus a blanket or mug. You can call the number 877-340-877 or visit obi.org to schedule your appointment. Art Camp and Science Camp starts today and lasts through Friday at the Station Recreation Center in Moore. Art Camp is for kids. Science Camp is for ages 6 through 12 for $105, and you can register at thecityofmore.com. Now your Fox 25 Storm Watch forecast from the Muffin Roofing Weather Center. Well, we had some chilly weather out there this morning, but we are starting to see some good improvements. And by late afternoon, we're going to feel actually pretty good out there, especially with all that sunshine and the south winds tracking through our area. Metro right now we got wind chills in the 20s. Now we had those in the single digits this morning, but now starting to see quite a bit of improvement again because of those winds pulling in from the south. As you head throughout the rest of the afternoon, temperatures will be in the upper 40s to around 50. Once you get to about three to four o'clock, cooling back down into the 40s as the sun sets and then tomorrow we really get to enjoy some nice weather. That's when through the end of the week, but notice the cloud cover will be increasing as we get closer to the weekend. Got a small disturbance that'll bring some rain chances. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Thanks, Elliot. Republicans say they are expecting big changes when they take control of the House. Coming up, what one of their biggest focuses will be. here at
at the live desk. The state capitol in Ohio is flooded. We have some incredible video from one of the senators there. He posted this to his Twitter page. You can see a single bucket not able contain, to contain all of that water. He said that it is his last day as a state senator there, Senator Jay Hottinger. And he says it's definitely sad to see and it's not going very well. So far, nothing has been confirmed exactly why this flooding is happening. Uh, no updates from the state house or any of the representatives there, but you can see just all of the damage that is being done. It looks like a leak from the ceiling, so we'll have to keep you updated on this situation here at the live desk. Thank you, Jameson. Heavy snow in large parts of Japan has killed 17 people and injured more than 90 others. The snow has also resulted in vehicles being stranded on highways and delivery services being delayed. One city reported snow higher than two feet on Saturday. And a record number of border encounters were seen last month. Customs Border Protection says the agency encountered over 233,000 people. That shatters the number of encounters last November, which was around 175,000. And the number of asylum seekers in the U.S. has also hit an all-time record. 1.6 million as asylum applications are pending in U.S. immigration courts. Average wait time for an asylum hearing is more than four years. The Texas National Guard has installed over two miles of fencing in the El Paso area since last week. According to a Texas National Guard spokesperson, more fencing is expected to be installed. Around 22,000 migrants are sleeping in shelters and makeshift encampments across three northern Mexico cities. And about 14,000 customers in Washington were without power yesterday morning after vandalism attacks. Officials in the city of Tacoma say that burglars damaged three substations Sunday. The damage to the stations caused power outages in the nearby cities. Police say they are investigating these incidents. And Republicans, or when Republicans rather, take control of the House in January, much of their agenda, much, much of their agenda includes oversight. Many have promised a hard look at America's response to the pandemic and the far-reaching consequences of those policies. From Washington. As we approach three years since the start of the pandemic, we're getting a clearer view of the consequences of lockdowns. There's a growing body of research showing that government lockdowns had severe costs. Math scores dropping to levels not seen since the 70s. Scores for black students falling more than twice as much as white students. Childhood obesity soaring. The body mass index of children aged 2 to 19 doubling during the pandemic, according to the CDC. Drug overdose deaths increasing as much as 55% in some states. Teen suicides also rising. As data comes to light, some calling for pandemic amnesty because we didn't know. But a 2006 World Health Organization study concluded forced isolation and quarantine are ineffective and impractical. A 2019 study by Johns Hopkins and the WHO reaching similar conclusions. So there was all sorts of evidence against this, but nevertheless, this was the policy course that was taken. It's going to take a lot of self-reflection of, uh, of the data at the time of what people were thinking to remedy this. Republicans arguing a thorough look into the United States' pandemic response will help the country react to future emergencies better. In Washington. I'm Kayla Gaskins. And Afghanistan's humanitarian crisis has carried on long into the Taliban takeover, and major foreign aid groups are pulling out. The Taliban banned female employees of non-governmental organizations from coming to work. They've also cracked down on women's rights in the country. Woke up to Christmas-like scenes yesterday. Several parts of the city were covered in snow due to low temperatures. Local authorities advised residents to keep themselves and their pets warm. Southwest Airlines customers are getting increasingly frustrated. The airline accounts for a majority of flight delays and cancellations across the United States right now. Southwest accounted for 42% of cancellations on Christmas Day. We've been standing in line for hours, canceled flight yesterday. I felt like we've been led on. When you call the line that they asked you to call, 
it hangs up on you. You call again, it has that dial tone, like the number doesn't exist. And then you call again, you get through, and you're on the hold for three, four hours. I did that last night, this morning. This is, this, it's just ridiculous. Certainly a frustrating situation. The president of Southwest Flight Attendant Union blames the company's executive leadership team, saying the flights are... Southwest systems have been unable to keep up with rescheduling and cancellations. Southwest Airlines says the issues stem from lingering weather-related complications, but assure customers they are doing whatever they can to get them home. You know, at this point, we're working to accommodate our customers as best we can and offer the most options that we can to get folks a celebration spot at this point. And Southwest Airlines does recommend customers reach out to a representative or visit their main site to rebook canceled flights. And if you're heading to the airport this morning, be sure to check your flight status first. Some factors behind yesterday's air travel mess will begin around today. Buffalo, Niagara close today. And while consumer goods everywhere went up in 2022 from inflation, two usually big ticket items went down in price. Prices for flat screen TVs fell off about 17% and the overall cost of attending sporting events was also down. The cost of buying sports tickets dropped about 7.2% this year. Well, we had that cold start this morning, but now we're starting to see some improvements, especially with the sunny skies and south winds moving through our area. Wind chills are still in the 20s, so a little bit chilly out there, but those are going to be going up a lot more as we head throughout this afternoon. It'll actually be a pretty decent day for uh, dog walking, especially later on this afternoon. We'll be in the upper 40s to low 50s around 3 to 4 o'clock, and then we start dipping down into the low to mid 40s the further we get into the evening. After today, we get to enjoy high join the 60s for the rest of the week after today. And I think tomorrow and Thursday will be our warmest days. I think some of you may even hit the mid 60s for the next couple of days, briefly cooling down as we head to the weekend. Some of you may be in the upper 50s on Saturday because of this upper level disturbance that will be moving through. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But keep in mind as we head throughout the day tomorrow, even though it's going to be pretty warm, it's also going to be a little bit windy. Wind gusts will be between 40 to even 45 miles an hour as we head throughout tomorrow afternoon. So just be mindful of that when you're out and about Wednesday afternoon. But here's that upper level disturbance that'll be moving in this weekend. That's going to bring us some cloud cover, but it's still going to feel good outside. Maybe a couple spotty showers Friday night going into early Saturday morning, but otherwise not going to see much of anything from at least this. More about that in a few moments as well, but the first day of 2023 looking to be pretty good. Upper 50s to low 60s going to be a little bit cloudy, but like I said, it is going to feel pretty good out there for the start of 2023, and we could be seeing temperatures above average uh, through the end of next week. We are looking to see some pretty warm conditions, which is well deserved for us, especially after that polar vortex we just dealt with a couple of days ago. But here's our next weather maker. This is going to be moving in on Monday. This cold front will bring some rain chances to the state. Could even taking place, so still a couple things we need to fine tune, but we'll be keeping a close eye on this as we go throughout the uh, next couple of days. But at this point, it does look like we are going to have that cold front move through on Monday. But overall, the forecast for the near future going to be on the quiet side. 50s today, 60s starting tomorrow. Those rain chances again going to be on the spotty side Friday night into Saturday. But the best part of our forecast is we get to stay well above average as we head into 2023. Thanks, Elliot. The White House is pushing a massive funding bill that could impact the migrant crisis at the border. Coming up, we'll tell you why some are for it and others are against this plan. And here's a live look at the Amarillo Junction. Hope you're traveling safe this Tuesday morning. The Biden administration is responding to this latest migrant surge after the Title 42 ruling as President Biden waits for that $1.7 trillion government funding bill to make its way to the Resolute desk. Fox, Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey tells us more. 
President Biden, pictured with a pen and a phone, spoke with Governor Kathy Hochul to get an update on the extreme winter weather hitting New York. That was at the White House, less than three miles away at the vice president's residence. Several dozen groups of migrants were dropped off after crossing into Texas illegally. Now the White House says Governor Abbott abandoned children on the side of the road in below freezing temperatures on Christmas Eve without coordinating with any federal or local authorities. This was a cruel, dangerous and shameful stunt. But not all stakeholders share the Biden administration's outrage. Frankly, Vice President Harris, you should thank uh, Governor Abbott because he's saving her the trip that she desperately does not want to make to the border so she can see the problem. He's bringing the border to her. He's saving her that trip. Without Supreme Court intervention, Title 42 could expire tomorrow. Following a weekend, DHS says they sent border crossers back with Title 42. Quote, individuals and families attempting to enter without authorization are being expelled as required by court order under the Title 42 Public Health Authority or placed into removal proceedings. We don't know if or when an immigration bill will make its way to the president's desk. We do know the next big item, a $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill. It's just littered with pork. President Biden disagrees, stating, This bill is good for our economy, our competitiveness, and our communities, and I will sign it into law as soon as it reaches my desk. As soon as he does, Republicans insist, voters will see lawmakers' pet projects popping up everywhere. You have the individual earmarks, individual priorities of, of <clears throat> members of Congress. It's amazing how many people are renaming buildings uh, after themselves. The president has a lot on his plate, and for the next few days, he's going to be dealing with it from afar because the first family remained here at the White House for Christmas, but plans to fly tomorrow to vacation for the rest of this year and the beginning of next year in St. Croix. At the White House, Peter Ducey, Fox News. And we're learning more about the government's involvement with, with Twitter. And coming up, we'll tell you how they have been affecting COVID vaccine information. This is the Fox 25 News at 11. Welcome back to Fox 25 News at 11. We're glad you're staying with us. I'm David Chazanoff. Things are looking better this Tuesday morning as we might even see some degrees up in the 60s tomorrow. Meteorologist Elliot Wilson joins us now to tell us more. Elliot. Oh, I know. I can't wait for the 60s tomorrow. This will be the last day we have where temperatures are below average for a while. So I guess soak it up while you can if you like the uh, cooler weather. But we do have some uh, nice conditions out there right now. Lots of sunshine across our area. A little bit on the chilly side, though. We still have wind chills that are below freezing, but a much better improvement uh, from what we saw this morning. We had single digit wind chills to start our day, but right now we got wind chills in the 20s and of course these will keep going up as we head throughout the uh, next few hours. So a little bit warmer today, much warmer highs are on the way. The 60s will be arriving tomorrow and we also have some rain chances in our forecast as well. But going throughout the rest of today, we'll get to enjoy the sunshine. Most of us will be in the low 40s once we get to noon and then we'll get into the mid to upper 40s as we head further into the afternoon. Here at the Lime Desk, we are following those flight cancellations, especially when it comes to Southwest. They have seen thousands of flights canceled, and that's also impacting Oklahomans. Here's a live look out at LAX, and thankfully, flights out to California out of the Will Rogers World Airport aren't impacted, but those are through Alaska Air uh, and American. But if we take a look at the Southwest flights that should be departing from Oklahoma City to Las Vegas, Chicago, those have been canceled as well as to Washington DC. Some of them are only delayed as of right now out of San Antonio, uh, but definitely some issues that people trying to get to Denver, trying to get to Orlando, they are experiencing and this is impacting people all over the US. We'll keep you updated here at the live desk. Thanks, Jameson. We'll have reaction more on that at 5 and 5.30. And looking at what's happening across Oklahoma, one person is recovering after a crash yesterday morning in Kay County. 
Troopers say a car lost control on Highway US 77 and crashed into a utility pole and fence. Diana Pancrest was trapped for 15 minutes before being rescued by Ponca City and Newkirk Fire Department. Officials say the road was icy and she was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. A federal appeals court has rejected Joseph Maldonado, also known as Joe Exotic's complaints about his resentencing. He was charged for trying to orchestrate Carol Baskin's death twice. Maldonado was resentenced earlier this year to 21 years in prison. He maintains he was set up and is innocent and is now seeking a new trial on newly discovered evidence and government misconduct grounds. A Tulsa brewery has become the latest victim in a string of break-ins in Tulsa. The owner of Nothing's Left Brewery caught the suspect on camera trying to rob an empty drawer. Taproom manager says there's a silver lining to this, saying the outpouring of support from other local businesses has been fantastic. They always do. Anytime something goes down anywhere in Tulsa, everyone comes together and tries to support that business. And it's really good to see. It's, it's awesome. If, if, if we hear that someone is struggling, you know, we want to go shop local. We want to make sure that these local businesses are up and running like they should be because that's how Tulsa runs is small businesses. Abby says all of the affected businesses are sharing their security footage and working together to try and catch the culprit. Tulsa's Expo Center is hosting the Lucas Oil Tulsa Shootout this week, celebrating 38 years in Tulsa. Practice starts this morning, then the racing begins at 7 p.m. This year, the event is estimated to bring in over $5 million to the city, and around 2,200 hotel rooms are expected to be filled. Those people bring their families. Those people come out and spend money in our retail, in our restaurants. They go to all of our attractions. Tulsa shootout officials say there's nowhere else in the country you can go to compete like this. The event will bring folks from 34 states, four countries, and every generation. General admission is 15 bucks and a pit pass is 30. And taking a look at your sports news now, the Oklahoma City Thunder takes on the San Antonio Spurs tonight at the Paycom Center. The Thunder broke a winning streak after losing against the New Orleans Pelicans on Friday night. The Spurs look to keep the wins coming after beating the Utah Jazz last night. That game starts tonight at 7 o'clock. Will be a fun one to watch for sure. Plenty of bowl games also to watch this week. OU takes on FSU in the Cheez-It Bowl on Thursday. And check out this video from the team in Orlando where they spent Christmas. The Sooners had Christmas brunch and went to Universal Studios. A much tougher schedule Thursday, but as they face off against the Seminoles, which are currently nine and a half point favorites according to DraftKings. And Oklahoma State kicks off tonight at the Guaranteed Rate Bowl in Phoenix. They're set to, to take on Wisconsin. Both teams coming in without their starting quarterbacks, Graham Mertz and Spencer Sanders, both entered the transfer portal. Gundy was asked if that makes tonight's game any different. Well, really, it goes back uh, three weeks. Our, our guys have, uh, have practiced really well. Their enthusiasm has been good. And with all the uncertainty now with things that go on, I was kind of curious as what the reaction would be of our team. Um, they had really good practices at home. And then obviously out here, they're very excited. And late kick for Cowboy fans, a 9-15 central start for the game. And taking a look at your health this morning, many people are choosing to improve how they look this holiday season, aren't we all? Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us how. As you make your list and check it twice, some are saying you need to put yourself on the list. They're choosing to use some of that year-end time off for cosmetic surgery. This is 100% purely for me. Janine Mullins made the decision to have upper eyelid surgery as part of her holiday wish list. You'll look more refreshed. You'll look natural. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. John Mendelson let us go inside the operating room to show how it works. You can see here this extra skin, this hooding she has in her eyelid. And, um, you know, she's complaining that it makes her look tired. She happens to use Zoom a little bit for uh, education and notice that uh, online, you know, she looks more tired than she wants to. And so our job is to excise her to remove this tissue and what uh, the uh, 20 to 30 minutes is performed under local anesthesia. But I'm hoping that if I look at myself and I don't look as tired, I won't feel as tired. <laughs> 
Here's an example of an eyelid before and after. About one in five getting these procedure now. Guys, uh, it does cost you about five to seven thousand dollars. In most cases, it's not covered by your medical insurance plan. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Tax credits up to $7,500 in the new year. A provision of the Inflation Reduction Act covers th these credits and vehicles must be made in the U.S. to qualify. There are also standards set on where their batteries were made. And several states are raising their minimum wages starting in the new year. California will have the nation's highest minimum wage for a state at $15.50 an hour. Washington, D.C.'s Massachusetts will hike to $15 an hour. The federal minimum wage is $7.25 uh, per hour and has not increased since 2009. Package delivery delays continue due to the winter storm. UPS says its hubs in Kentucky and Illinois are impacted. It's also experiencing delays in Michigan, New York, Indiana, and Ohio with no pickups or deliveries in several postal codes. Another volume of Twitter files has dropped, this time focusing on how the social media giant allegedly rigged the COVID debate with Elon Musk teasing that there's more where that came from. Fox 25 News, or Fox News rather, correspondent Aisha, Aisha Hosni has this story. Today's new pandemic and how the government tried to control the narrative. Writer David Zweig says the Trump White House came looking for help from the tech companies to combat misinformation about runs on grocery stores, but there were runs on grocery stores. Zweig also reveals Twitter monitored the Trump White House. General counsel Jim Baker asked why a tweet from then President Trump telling people not to be afraid of COVID was not violating their COVID misinformation policy. Twitter's former head of trust and safety, Yoel Roth, replied that the tweet was simply an optimistic statement. Once the Biden administration came in, Zweig said, executives was on COVID. The focus was on anti-vaxxer accounts. We have an uh, interdisciplinary group at Twitter. Zweig says Twitter's head of U.S. public policy even noted the Biden team was very angry that Twitter had not been more aggressive in deplatforming multiple accounts. They wanted Twitter to do more messages on how involved it was in stamping out COVID disinformation, first admitting we are in regular touch uh, with these social media platforms uh, and those uh, engagements typically happen through members of our senior staff, but also members of our COVID-19 team. But then insisting we were not involved. I can say that we were not involved. Zweig says Twitter executives didn't always suppress views, many from doctors and scientific experts that conflicted with the official positions of the White House. And we did reach out to the White House for a response to these new Twitter files. And by the way, these new COVID files come after a Christmas Eve dump that revealed the FBI and CIA have been meddling in content moderation for years. In Washington, Apple is being sued because of their products. We'll tell you why some say an app is racially biased. And here's a live look at the Amarillo Junction. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on this Tuesday morning. Well, at least 20 people are dead in Buffalo, New York, as a, as a direct result of the blizzard. Many victims were found outside or in their cars. Conditions were so bad in Buffalo that even the helpers had to be helped. Two thirds of the equipment that went out during the height of the storm got stuck. We had to send uh, specialized rescue crews to go get the rescuers, law enforcement, uh, first responders, fire, EMTs. Uh, it was just horrendous and it was horrendous for uh, literally 24 hours in a row. And Governor Kathy Hochul has sent an emergency disaster declaration to the White House and she expects quick relief. A tragic house fire in Tennessee kills a family of six yesterday. 
By the time firefighters arrived on scene, the house was fully engulfed in flames. Four adults and two children are believed to have died in this fire. Their identities have not yet been released. Texas's electric grid held up better against this winter storm than the Great Texas Freeze last year. Around 77,000 Texans lost power on Friday, and the state got special permission from the U.S. Department of Energy to pollute more than, more than what's usually allowed by burning dirtier fuel to meet demands. And the newly elected Republican congressman from New York admits he made up parts of his life story. George Santos telling the New York Post that he's but he says he's still going to Congress. It's unsure if he will face any consequences. And Apple is facing allegations of racial bias over the Apple Watch's blood oximeter feature. The lawsuit was filed by a New York man on Saturday who claims the blood oxygen app is racially biased against people with darker skin tones. The lawsuit states the app measures blood oxygen levels without regard to skin tone. Well, it's been a pretty cold start this morning, but we are seeing some good improvements taking place. We got wind chills in the uh, mid to upper 20s, even low 30s in a couple of spots. But luckily, these south winds will keep moving through and helping us warm up a little bit more as we head into the afternoon. Not to mention, we have lots of sunshine out there, and that's going to stay with us as we head throughout the rest of today. We'll hit the upper 40s to around 50 once we get to about 3 to 4 o'clock, and then cool back down into the 40s as we go throughout the rest of the evening. Tomorrow is when the really nice weather will be moving into our area. We get to enjoy highs in the 60s as we end out 2022 and go into 2023. Some of you on Saturday, though, may be stuck in the upper 50s because we do have a small disturbance that'll be moving through. More on that in just a moment. The south winds will keep staying with us as we head throughout the day tomorrow as well. But keep in mind, tomorrow it's going to be a lot more breezy outside. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be seeing wind gusts anywhere from 40 to even possibly 45 miles an hour. So be mindful of this if you are going to be on the roads at all uh, tomorrow afternoon. Sometimes we get wind gusts that high, it can make it a, a little difficult to drive. So that's going to be happening tomorrow. That disturbance I was mentioning, that's going to be arriving this weekend. And as far as rain goes, we may catch a couple of spotty showers late Friday night going into Saturday morning. But otherwise, the main thing we'll see from this disturbance is some extra cloud cover going into the weekend, which is why our temperatures may be a little bit cooler for some of you on Saturday. But as we head into the new year, Sunday, a lot of us are going to be in the uh, upper 50s to low 60s. So things are looking to be very nice for the start of the new year. Not to mention, we're looking to see temperatures above average for a while, possibly to the end of next week. A complete 180 from what we had the uh, past couple of days. So this is some very good news for us. Things are looking great to start the new year. Now our next weather maker is going to be arriving on Monday. This cold front is going to be tracking into our area. This will bring a few showers and possibly some storms to the state. Now we still have about six days until this event takes place, so we're still fine tuning a few things, but keep in mind the chances for the rain uh, certainly there, not to mention that cold front does look like it is going to be moving into our area on Monday of next week. Luckily, I, I don't think that cold front is going to be cooling us down all that much, not to mention before that cold front arrives. Overall, the weather is going to be pretty quiet for the next couple of days. 60s starting tomorrow and even our overnights are going to be above freezing as we head into the new year. Man, I'm excited for Wednesday. Thank you, Elliot. And make sure you sign up for our newsletter. You can read the top local news stories affecting your area, along with national headlines, all delivered right to your inbox. You can just go to our app or website and click on this Stay Connected button. And here's what's coming up tonight on Fox 25. At 7 and 8, it's The Resident. And then get your day's news on the Fox 25 News at 9 with Dan Snyder and Wendy Suarez. Oh boy, what a deal. Stretching your dollar is top of mind for many these days. Genevieve Gorder is here to help with today's America's Steals and Deals. The following segment is sponsored by Knocking. Everybody, I've got something to show you today that you're all very familiar with, but there's an extra twist. Now, we all love a good air fryer. It's quick, we avoid the oil, the calories, seriously, like... And I'm sure a lot of you share this with me. I think they're bulky, they're not so cute, and they take up way too much space on the counter. Okay, my rant is over. Needless to say, when the air roll showed up in the mail, I was doing a little dance. 
Let me tell you about this solution-based product that is going to solve all your bulky air fryer issues. It's called the Air Whirl Crisper, and it can turn any pan into an air fryer. So you just and your food will be air fried in a fraction of the time. I use it the same day it arrived, put the lid on, press the button, done. And then you're winning because you can put it all away in the drawer. The Air Whirl is so easy to use, battery operated. You can store it without any of those tangled wires. And the thermometer is right here in the front of the lid. So you always know what temperature you are cooking at, just like you would on any traditional air fryer. Right now on ASA Deals, we are offering an exclusive 33% off the Air World Crisper. You guys take advantage of this deal because they're not going to last long. Go to asadeals.com. Breaking news here. More than 60% of their flights today, while all other airlines have canceled less than 2%. And the federal government says they are concerned about what's going on at Southwest. Here's a live look out in Washington, D.C. And even President Biden is getting in on this situation. Just minutes ago, he tweeted and said thousands of flights nationwide have been canceled. And his administration is working to ensure airlines are held accountable. He shared a link to the Department of Transportation. Uh, consumer watch uh, website. This is an area where flyers who have been delayed or have had canceled flights can see if they are, can be compensated and uh, get some help with all of these cancellations. You can find that on his Twitter. And there's also a statement from the Department of Transportation that says they are concerned by Southwest's unacceptable rate of cancellations and delays during the holiday season. We'll keep you updated here at the live desk. Thank you, Jameson. Well, the restaurant industry report says the restaurant industry is finally adding employees back. The Labor Department says all but 2.1% of establishments have returned as of last month. And travelers hoping to catch price breaks and airline flights may have to wait. New data from travel app Hopper suggest air travelers will pay 7% more in January and 13% more for and jet fuel costs. And discounts and deals apparently swayed people into spending more this holiday season. MasterCard reported holiday retail sales in the U.S. jumped over 7.5% compared to last year. Black Friday was still the top day for shopping, with sales up more than 12% from last year. And if you're thinking about Christmas, ex experts remind you return policies are changing. Policies have shorter windows as short as 30 days now. So decide if you're keeping something or exchanging it. NASA is sharing what winter is like on Mars. According to the Space Agency, these photos captured Mars changing landscape in the winter. This photo shows mega. And while the winter weather might not be the most fun for us humans, man's best friend and a deer are enjoying the snowfall. The recent storm makes Ontario, Canada looking like a winter wonderland. A, spring, a Springer Spaniel dog was filmed playing with a stick while a deer pranced across the heavy snow. The reason I would want to have snow here again, just so we can see uh, the animals playing around with each other. That is absolutely adorable right there. But your pets are going to be loving the weather as we head throughout the next couple of days, because starting tomorrow, we get to enjoy temperatures above average. Right now, we're still pretty chilly. We have winds moving in out of the south, which will help us out a lot later on this afternoon. But right now, we still have wind chills that are below freezing and quite. Get a coat if you are going to be heading out the door or going outside anytime soon. Highs will make into the upper 40s to low 50s as we head throughout the late hours of the afternoon, keeping with the 40s as we head into this evening. Tomorrow, we start in the 60s. We get to enjoy some very nice weather, but keep in mind it is going to be a little bit breezy. Wind gust will be anywhere from 40 to 45 miles an hour as we head throughout a good into Wednesday afternoon. And then as we head into the new year, we are looking to keep those temperatures above normal. So we'll have a nice warm start to 2023. Some wonderful news there. As far as rain chances go, we'll catch a couple of spotty showers late Friday night into early Saturday morning. Otherwise, our next rain chance, next best rain chance, I should say, is coming up on Monday. We got a cold front that's 
days out from that taking place, so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. But it does look like that cold front will be moving in on Monday, after which it doesn't look like we're going to cool off that much. So, man, I'm ready for the 60s already. Just take me to Wednesday. I know we're less less than 24 hours now till we start seeing. Those I'm 60s. counting down. All right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the internet's favorite word game topped Google Trends most search list. Reached its peak number of searches in February. The top five also included election results, Betty White, The Queen, and Bob Saget. Man, I tried Wordle for like two weeks and then, I don't know, my vocabulary just isn't that good. I gave up pretty fast. I mean, that game is frustrating. Yeah. You know, it just takes a lot of brain power, a lot of patience, and, uh, you of the fifth or fourth bar or however many yeah. bars or columns there are, I, I never reached that goal. I wasn't very good at that. Were you good at it, Jameson? I've never tried it. Ooh. I've never played. Oh, you got to okay. try at least once. Yeah. All right. Well, snow has been falling up north, and that means iguanas are actually falling in Florida. Wildlife experts say once temperatures drop below 40 degrees, iguanas become warned not to take frozen iguanas into their homes. The reptiles could become defensive when they become unstunned. Oh gosh. That's the last oh, thing man. I want to see when I get out. And oh, this gosh. looks pretty small here, but I've seen these things get huge. Yeah, yeah I don't want to see they that. They can do some damage. I know, yeah, I'm like, good. And that's something else you got to keep in mind. When it becomes unfrozen, I guess, that they can grow and if you lose <laughs> God, I don't know who would Florida want to take that. Florida is wild. That's it, something yeah. my parents got to watch out for in Naples, man. That's, <laughs> oh my God, I don't want to see that critter outside. Yeah. That's for sure. Any, but hey, pe any piece whatever. of wildlife, all I'll say is this, any piece of wildlife in Florida, I would not bring it to your house. Yeah, yes. yeah, that, that is definitely for sure. <laughs> no. But hey, thank you so much for joining us for the Fox 25 News at 11. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you right back here at 5 o'clock.